So if we consider a layer of atmosphere, say the bottom 500 millibars, stretching from, say, Colorado up to the Arctic, and this is illustrated here by the top of this layer um, from Colorado here, where it's much warmer, of course, up to the Arctic. And we know that warmer air takes up more vertical space than colder air. So this leaves us with this slope, this surface of the top of this layer of atmosphere that has a hill. And what the air tends to do is it wants to flow downhill towards the Arctic. And because the Earth is spinning, the Coriolis force tries, uh, sends that moving air that's trying to flow north to the right, and we end up with the jet stream, this river of fast moving air at high levels um, over our heads. But as we warm the Arctic more than we warm the mid-latitudes, this layer of air becomes, uh, the, hill, the hill that it creates is less steep. And so this causes the jet stream to weaken in the zonal direction. So the west to east winds of the jet stream are, should weaken because of this Arctic amplification. So the result, that's the first effect that we expect to see as a result of Arctic amplification. And in fact, if we look at observations, if we look at the NSEP reanalysis for what the 500 millibar zonal winds have been doing over the last several decades, going back to 1980, right up to present, what we see here is in the fall now, this black line is the actual observed zonal wind at 500 millibars, and you can see that very clearly it has been decreasing. And in fact, its speeds are about 10% lower than they were say back around 1990. We also noticed that they really started to drop off right when the sea ice really started to disappear. And the dotted line here is the sea ice area at the end of summer. And what you can see is that right as the, as the ice started to drop off, that's about when the zonal winds started to decrease too. So this is what we expect to happen. This is what we're seeing happening. When the jet stream winds get weaker in the zonal direction, through Rosby theory, we know that a weaker jet stream, and just through your own experience as meteorologists, you know that when the jet stream is kind of weak and sluggish, it tends to meander more. You see it on your weather maps. And we also know that when it has this more meandering trajectory, the waves that we see in the jet stream, especially the large scale waves, tend to not move very fast. So that's the first effect. The second effect that we hypothesized was this idea that if you take a contour of the 500 millibar height field, say this wave, typical Rossby wave or large scale wave over North America here, and you warm, because of Arctic amplification, if we warm the northern part of this wave more than the southern part of this wave, then the 500 millibar heights in the ridges are going to increase more than they are in the troughs. So that means if you want to stay on this, say you're walking along this height contour, and you want to stay on that height contour, you're actually going to have to go farther north to be at that same height. So the effect of this is that the waves, the large scale waves in the flow, are actually getting stretched in the north-south direction. This is another factor that's causing the, the flow to become more meandering. This is a little an animation of the actual jet stream. This is created with real data by NASA's uh, Science Visual Visualization Laboratory. And what you're seeing here are little vectors showing what the winds are doing at something like five or 500 millibars or so. The colors indicate the wind speed, so the red colors here um, are where the winds are faster. Right now we're looking down on the northern hemisphere, uh, down on the uh, North Pole, and what you can see is a typical sort of jet stream encircl encircling the entire northern hemisphere. So as I put this in motion, what you're going to see is these waves in the jet stream that we're all familiar with. And there are times when these waves are relatively low amplitude. And we know that in this kind of a condition, the storms tend to ride pretty quickly across the northern hemisphere. So when I start this up again, what you're going to see is the character of this wave change over time. And it's going to go into this 
configuration now of being much higher amplitude. And as you'll notice, as I set it in motion again, these waves, these big large scale waves in the jet stream are not going to move very fast across the northern hemisphere. They tend to be kind of stuck. We tend to see cutoff lows. We tend to see blocking highs. And this is, and we tend to see a lot of messy stuff going on too. The jet stream is not a simple um, creature. <laughs>